Good morning, School of Light. We are in 2 Kings chapter 22. And the title of this chapter is The Book of the Law Found. Pretty exciting, sounds like, right? Josiah was eight years old when he became the king and reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. His mother's name was Jedi, Jedida, daughter of Adaya. She was from Boscath. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and walked in all the ways of his father David, not turning aside to the right or to the left. In the 18th year of his reign, King Josiah sent the secretary Shaphan, son of Azaliah, the son of Meshulam, to the temple of the Lord. He said, Go up to the hill, correction, go up to Hilkiah, the high priest, and have him get ready the money that has been brought into the temple of the Lord, which the doorkeepers have collected from the people. Have them entrusted to the men appointed to supervise the work on the temple. And have these men pay the workers who repair the temple of the Lord, the carpenters, the builders, and the masons. Also have them purchase timber and dress stone to repair the temple, but they need not account for the money entrusted to them because they are acting faithfully. Hilkiah, the high priest said to Shaphan, the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. He gave it to Shaphan, who read it. Then Shaphan, the secretary, went to the king and reported to him, Your officials have paid out the money that was in the temple of the Lord and have entrusted it to the workers and supervisors at the temple. Then Shaphan, the secretary, informed the king, Hilkiah, the priest, has given me a book. And Shaphan read from it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the word of the book of the law, he tore his robes. He gave these orders to Hilkiah the priest, Achikam, son of Shaphan, Akbor, son of Micaiah, Shaphan, the secretary, and Asaiah, the king's attendant. Go and inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah about what is written in the book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that burns against us because our forefathers have not obeyed the words of this book. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written there concerning us. Hilkiah, the priests, Ahikam, Akbor, Shaphan, and Asaiah went to speak to the prophetess Hulda, who was the wife of Shalom, son of Tigva, the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. She lived in Jerusalem in the second district. Wow. She said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Tell the man who sent you to me, This is what the Lord says. I'm going to bring disaster on this place and its people according to everything written in this book that the king of Judah has read. Because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods and provoked me to anger by all their idols their hands have made. My anger will burn against this place and will not be quenched. Tell the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of the Lord, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the words you heard. Because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I have spoken against this place and its people, that they would become accursed and laid waste. And because you tore your robes and wept in my presence, I have heard you, declares the Lord. Therefore, I will gather you to your fathers and you will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see all the disaster I'm going to bring on this place. So they took her answer back to the king. Wow, Hulda, the prophet Hulda, the female prophet Hulda. I must have gone through the Old Testament minimum of five, six times in my life, and I never really was impacted that this is a female prophet in the Old Testament, and it's so unique. One, the king, it says that he doesn't veer from the right to the, or to the left from his way of his father, David. And I thought to myself, what does that mean for you, me? Really, I thought, what does that mean for me? What does that mean for others? Well, <clears throat> I picture we're moving forward with God and staying focused and moving forward with God. Now the opposite visualization or idea picture is you and I moving forward 
and then something to the left or to the right says, hey, Seferino, John, Samantha, Susan, Rita, look to the right, turn to the right, turn to the left. Um, and then we turn right or we, or we turn to the left, we turn to the right. And what does it take to stay like somebody who serves God like David and doesn't turn to the right or to the left? What does it take? One, I think it takes uh, awareness that it's going to take something because there's going to be distractions to make us turn left and to turn right. So what's it going to take? Maybe. It's like fixing your gaze on, right now I'm looking at a cottonwood tree. Or whenever I was in the military and we would do land navigation, you would pick a point that was in line with your azimuth, something different, something that you couldn't mistake. And you start in that direction, you walk a course, but you keep that in sight. You don't really, you might take your eyes off of it to uh, navigate the ground or uh, overcome, you know, logs, obstacles, things like that. But you always keep your eyes focused on that so that you end up going to the point where your azimuth uh, and your map tells you you need to go. So it's, in summary, I guess it would take focus and awareness knowing that the propensity for many is to look to the right to look to the left god bless you guys i hope this will bless you if you guys need bible studies give me a shout let me know uh we have resources beyond uh english they're in polish they're in spanish uh they're in german they're in french we have multiple languages just let me know and we'll get them sent to you. God bless you all. Have a good one. Bye.